Okay, welcome to our first grammar unit of the year. Uh, pretty easy one. My opinion should all be sort of reviewed to you. Um, and it is capitalization and then followed by uh, punctuating titles. So let's start with capitalization. Uh, anything that I ask you to write down, you really should be writing down in the notebook to get credit for your homework. And uh, if I ask you to write down an example of something, please do that as well. Okay, so there's five rules about capitalization that we're going to start with. So rule number one, and that includes people's names and their titles. Okay, so people's names and their titles. Some examples of these, you know, found pretty commonly. Uh, you know, titles like Mr. or Miss or Mrs. Um, would both have a capital for the title and for the last name. Uh, if someone is an elected official, senator, congressperson, congresswoman, congressman, um, president, uh, those titles as well as their last names would be capitalized. Uh, even informal titles like uncle and aunt um, would have uh, capital for the title as well as capital for the person's first name. Uh, anyone who's in religious, you know, clergy, rabbi, um, any of those titles would have a capital. As I mentioned, elected officials, but also kings, queens, prince, princess, duchess, duke, any of those uh, sort of given titles or inherited titles would be capitalized. Uh, I mentioned president already. And finally, even, a, again, another informal sort of title, you know, something like principal would have a capital as well as a capital for the last name. Rule number two, another thing that's very common. We're talking about days of the week, months of the year, and any holidays. And those holidays could be, again, very formal holidays or very informal holidays. If you had something like National Taco Day, that would still get capitalized because it is technically a holiday. So again, probably don't need to do this, but some examples um, of things that would get capitalized. Now, I think the reason that people don't capitalize these is laziness, um, honestly, and, and, and um, you know, you have to just get a little more diligent when it comes to capitalization in this regard. Moving on to rule number three. So we're talking about ethnic groups, nationalities, and languages. Because, um, reason being is because most nationalities or ethnic groups are based on a country. And because a country would be capitalized, you would need to capitalize uh, any of these uh, examples of things that I uh, will be listing for you right now. So, Ones like African American, uh, even though Africa is not a country, it's a continent, that would also be capitalized. So those um, would need to be capitalized. Um, Spanish, when you're talking about the language of, of Spanish, you're talking about Spanish food, um, culture, uh, dress, anything, uh, because Spain is a country, it gets capitalized. British, Chinese, Arabic, okay, it's a, a language, but still. Um, because it's based of a region um, of the of the world, then you would capitalize that. Caucasian also gets capitalized, even though, again, it's not really necessarily a country, it's an ethnicity, um, so that would be capital C. Um, Greek. And then the last one just to keep in mind is that because um, we have, you know, over the years, sort of used colors to determine uh, nationality stuff, stuff like black and white, um, those don't need to be capitalized because they are not based on uh, a country per se. Now this one, rule number four, might be new to you. Um, it also can be a little confusing, so I tried to write it as best as I could. It says, family titles when you could replace the title with the person's first name. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. What I mean by that is, you know, your mom and dad have a, you know, given name, a birth name. Uh, it's not mom or dad. You call them that. That's their family title. So when you can replace that family title with the person's first name in the sentence, then you would capitalize it. So here are two examples, and this will be very, very helpful. So I, I really think you should write these two examples down. So first example says, I'm just going to read the, the, the black um, text. When mom and dad got home, grandma said the kids had been very good. Okay. And you notice that mom, dad, and grandma are all capitalized. And that is because you could substitute uh, the person's given name, first name, and then that sentence would make sense. So because you can substitute their given name, then it gets a capital letter for their family name. 
So mom gets capitalized because I could say when Mary and Steve got home, Barbara said the kids had been very good. So because I can substitute those names, then that becomes a capital. Here's an example where you would not capitalize. Okay, when you put the word my in front of it, it no longer works. Okay, it becomes a possessive. My mom gave my dad a sweater for his birthday. And because you would not say my Mary gave my Steve a sweater for his birthday, then that becomes uh, not capitalized. So those are two examples. Um, it's a really easy rule to remember. Um, but again, it might be something that's new to you. So that's going to be one that you should uh, really take note of. And finally, we have rule number five. And this is kind of everything else um, that falls into uh, the category of proper nouns. And again, you've been knowing this now probably since maybe first or second grade of what a proper noun is. But some examples in case you, uh, you know, were confused, uh, you wouldn't ca capitalize the word continent, but you would capitalize Africa because it is a specific continent. You wouldn't capitalize the direction south as in I'm traveling south. But if you're saying I'm going down south, okay, um, you know, down to you know the area of the country that would be, you know, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida. So that would be south in that direction um, because it's a location, a place. You would capitalize that, but not the direction going south. Um, if you just said the president, you don't capitalize that. But when again, when we talked about this a few minutes ago, when there's a title and then the person's last name, then you would. Your address, if you just said you know, I'm walking down the street. Street doesn't get capitalized, but when you put, you know, a specific street, Main Street, then you capitalize Main and Street. And the street could be anything from road to lane to way to drive, whatever that second word is, it gets capitalized because it's a proper noun. Finally, if you had any, um, you know, bodies of water or mountains, you know, like Lake Superior, Mount Olympus, because those are specific mountains, um, those would get capitalized, those lakes, those rivers would get capitalized. But if you just said the word mountain, then that wouldn't, because that's just a common noun. So we want to make sure that we're um, capitalizing our proper nouns. So moving on, um, I mentioned punctuation of titles. And what I really mean by that is, when do you underline or italicize the title versus when you use quotation marks for a title of something. Okay, so there is a very, very simple rule, and I really, really would like you to get this down so that you remember it, and that is this. Italics and underlining are the same thing. So when you underline something or use italics, it is the same thing. Um, if you have the choice, you should italicize. So if you're typing something and it's a title of a, uh, of a book, then you would italicize it. If you're handwriting it, as you'll often see me write on the back chalkboard, I will underline the title um, because I'm not going to try to slant my handwriting so that it looks like it's in italics. I underline that. The second reminder, and this is the, uh, the rule I was speaking of before, is that quotation marks go on short pieces of, uh, of art or, or short works, um, short stories, uh, the the name of a television show, the episode that you're watching, that would get quotation marks. Short things, this title of a song, uh, or if they appear in a larger work. The italics go for longer things, bigger things. Okay, so that's a little shortcut. The next slide is a list of all the things that would get underlined or italicized. It is a long list, but I will point out some ones you should definitely write down. If you choose to write them all down, that's fine, but there are certain ones that you must write down. So the things that we're going to come across more often than others in this uh, class this year, books, plays, magazines, newspapers, and films. These first five right here, okay, those are important, as well as website names, okay? And you'll see these two different columns I have. Um, you know, a list of all the items, but I also have examples next to them of, of things that would be, um, you know, on uh, in a, in a list that you would underline or italicize. 
If you need to pause the video to copy the rest of these down, you can do that now. But I'm going to move on to another list, and it's a shorter list of when to use quotation marks. All right, so this is the quotation mark list. As I said, it's a little bit shorter. Um, again, some things to point out to you um, that we'll use more often than not, and that would be the first four listed here. Okay, will you be using uh, specifically the first two when we do our research paper, but essays from journals or anthologies, articles from magazines or newspapers, short stories, and short poems. So those four right there are very important. The other ones are important, but more important, the first four that are listed there. Okay, um, so for instance, if this seven deadly things in your kitchen, if that was listed in an, uh, you know, a magazine, um, the magazine title, say it was Time Magazine, Time Magazine, that would get italics because it's a magazine and it's long, but the article title would get uh, quotation marks. Okay, so that's how it works because it's part of a larger thing. All right. Again, if you need to pause this to copy all those down, you can do that now, but I'm going to go on to our final slide here. The last thing I want you to remember, we're kind of combining the two things here. We talked about capitalization a few minutes ago, and we incorporated titles into that as well. The rule for capitalization of titles, what words should be capitalized, what words shouldn't, are as follows. You always capitalize the first word, no matter what. You always capitalize the last word, no matter what. The third one is very vague. It says any important words in between. Now, that's really up to you to determine what words you think might be important. But I use the example of the uh, 10th grade novel, The Catcher in the Rye. So the word the has to be capitalized. The word rye has to be capitalized. Then you're left with catcher in the. So I capitalized catcher because that is important. It's not just a very common word like in and the. But again, notice this the gets capitalized. This one does not. Don't think that that's all that important. Okay, so just another rule to remember uh, to write down so that you'll remember that. Uh, that is the end of our um, video about capitalization and about uh, punctuation of titles. Again, if you need any part of this repeated, go back, take a look at it, um, copy anything down you think might be important.